Back at launch, I criticized two things about the performance. The first was the CPU burden that the game had. It scaled poorly across many threads in comparison to other Paragon examples like Cyberpunk 2077, and as a result, it had areas in the game like Aquila or other planets where the CPU load was extreme, leading to poor frame times on CPUs and no good way to improve performance with modern high-end CPUs, as the game didn't really scale well beyond six threads and cores. This has changed dramatically with the beta patch. As you can see here, the game running on a Ryzen 7800X 3D shows a rather intense 20% performance uplift in the game now due to the beta patch. That is a really big performance increase so close to a game launch and from a single patch, and I think it really calls into question how actually optimized this game was at launch. Just a cursory glance shows what is happening. We can see greater utilization of the CPU threads and cores on this 7800X3D that is not shown in the previous version of the game. Essentially more threads are burdened in a way and the greater utilization is leading to higher performance. So modern CPU owners can rejoice and Starfield will run better, but how much better? It depends, I would say. One thing you can see in this footage that I'm showing here is that the beta patch on Steam still has those same little frame time hiccups that are there that was in the launch version of the game and in the otherwise live patch that you can download right now on things like the Microsoft Store. So the game is going to run better on average, but you will still see frame time spikes and stutters in the game. And I think Bethesda still needs to look into this and reduce these frame time spikes in future patches. For mid to low end users, I can also report that there is increased performance on lower end chips such as the Ryzen 5 3600. This has two less cores and four less threads and a lot less cache than the 7800X3D, yet we can see a similar 17% performance uplift at the same settings versus the launch code of the game. That brings the CPU so much closer to a consistent 60 FPS, which otherwise I would say was not really possible as it had many dips into the 40s. It's kind of astonishing once again to see this level of CPU improvement so close to launch with no visible quality reduction in the game. This increased performance of the Ryzen 5 3600 actually makes me think that something like a performance mode might be possible on Xbox Series X consoles, as the CPU in that console often has similar performance to the Ryzen 5 3600 in a number of titles as we've measured at Digital Foundry. So on the CPU side of things, we can see some really great improvements here. And when combined with DLSS's official implementation of frame generation, as we can see here, we can get a rather awesome experience in Starfield now. As we can see, the performance is greatly increased by turning on DLSS frame generation when CPU limited here. But you will notice that it isn't a complete two times improvement of performance like we would usually expect in CPU limited titles. The game apparently has a max frame rate internally of around 165 or 167 FPS or so. I find this a bit unfortunate and a bit arbitrary of a number, and I really hope that Bethesda allows users to uncap the frame rate above this without any issues in the game. So another thing for Bethesda to look into and investigate for future patches. Coming over to GPU performance, the launch version of the game had two faces, so to speak. A good face, where if you were on AMD, I think the game ran reasonably well on your GPU. If you had Intel or Nvidia, your GPU was way underperforming vis-a-vis -vis how it usually performs in nearly every other game on the market in comparison to similar AMD chips. For example, I measured the RX 6800 XT being 46% faster than the RTX 3080 at launch in the same scene at native 1440p with FSR2 and the highest settings preset. That is truly unheard of performance differential there between these GPUs and this is a title that is not utilizing ray tracing where we would usually expect to see bigger differences. The beta update to Starfield changes this. On the AMD side, the gains are very modest for the RX 6800 XT, putting that launch version next to the current beta patch, we can see a 5% performance uplift for the beta patch between the two of them. A little uptick in performance here, but nothing too major. Going over to the RTX 3080 though, we can see a huge difference. The current patch increases the RTX 3080 performance at those same ultra settings and resolution by 30%. This is honestly pretty unheard of for AAA titles, and if we look at the frame times, we can also see that the frame time issue that the game had with ultra settings for shadows on Nvidia cards appears to be gone as well here. As I said at launch, Bethesda needed to work on its Nvidia specific path. 
and this performance difference I've measured here shows that they really have. Doing the vendor head-to-heads, we can see that the RX 6800 XT is still ahead by 18% over that RTX 3080, but it is no longer 50% faster at the same settings than the RTX 3080. It is still a somewhat statistically anomalous large lead for a rasterization title, but it makes a lot more sense in comparison to what we had at launch. Going down the stack to older mid-range GPUs, the gains are a bit less impressive. The RX 5700 has seen a roughly 6% performance uplift as of the latest patch. The RTX 2070 Super has had a more sizable 14% performance uplift versus its measured launch performance. Yet the ARC A770 has seen the least movement in my performance testing here measured in this scene, with just 3% performance improvement at those same settings in total with the latest beta patch. Either way, when I put the three GPUs next to each other in comparison, we can see that the ARC A770 is still underperforming heavily in this title next to things that I would call its peers. The RTX 2070 Super and RX 5700 are now a great deal closer. Although I must say I do find it pretty weird that the 2070 Super is losing still measurably to that RX 5700 as the 2070 Super is often in a performance bracket above the RX 5700. Still, it is improved and that's better than none at all.